Hello everyone, this is my presentation for the virtual poster session for the third general conference. The work has been done, this work has been done in collaboration together with the CNR and the Ubiquitous Internet Group at CNR, and more specifically together with Chiara Boldrini, Andrea Passarella and Lorenzo Valerio. And today we are going to talk and see a poster um, which discuss uh, the resilience and the robustness of decentralized learning systems towards uh, a user, a malicious user to have access to uh, image generators. So basically, the main difference between a data parallel scenario, a centralized scenario, like uh, we are used to call it, and uh, a decentralized scenario is that uh, in the data parallel scenario, we have a device which holds the global states, share it with some peers, together with a portion of the data set. The uh, local peers use the local data set to compute the gradients, share the gradients back to the parameter server which manages to collect them and merge it and blend them. Uh, the data set is shared and the model is shared all across the network and we have a global state. In a decentralized scenario, we take a step towards the decentralized scenarios with federate learning. Basically we have um, a central parameter server which holds the global state, holds the global state, uh, but, uh, and we share it with some peers, but each peer has a local data set which cannot be shared with other devices, mainly for privacy concerns, but uh, we have other kind of situations. Uh, basically, we share this, uh, the, the global model, the local peers use the local data set to update the model, to train the model, okay, for a few steps, and then they share it back to the central server, which manages to collect all the models, not the gradients, not, not update, but the models trained by the peers, and blend them, and merge them. Uh, we have some techniques. The most simple one is, uh, for sure, Fedavucci, which basically tries to average the models. Uh, and then we have a decentralized scenario without central coordination. Basically, in this scenario, all devices are all at the same logical level, and uh, we receive some models from our neighbors, and we share our models with some neighbors, but we don't have connections to a parameter server. Maybe due to network, uh, because the network is very dynamic, or uh, we don't have powerful devices in the network, but basically this is uh, our scenario. Uh, so when to use uh, uh, decentralized without coordination? Well, well uh, basically the model has to fit on their own devices, both for training and for inference, and this is for sure. Uh, well, uh, if typically we look for privacy concerns. For example, hospital cannot share the data publicly with other um, entities, third party entities uh, or other services. Um, and, and, and so they may use like uh, decentralized solutions. The data has to be kept in the hospital, maybe. And, um, and, and then we can ask ourselves if the devices are all at the same logical level. If they are at the same logical level, then we go fully decentralized. Um, so, uh, within these settings of the decentralized without coordination, we took a graph. We took a Barabasi Albert graph. We um, uh, why the Barabasi Albert graph? Because it resembles a lot of situations that we can see in the wild, for example, the social network graphs. And we then, um, in this graph, we made up a distribution, which is not uh, ID. And basically, every node sees uh, a different data sets, different uh, samples, di different images of the MNIST data set and uh, the distribution is random so we may end up with, uh, with a node which is most of the samples for class 4 and another node which is most of class samples for class uh, 5. So we forced the hub to be the one with the most images of uh, 9 and then we corrupt the 75% of them and the corruptions happen to be an interpolation in the Latin space of a pre-trained gun of uh, images of 9 with images of four. Uh, and then we see what happens in the network. And uh, basically what we, um, uh, we saw is that the network is very res resilient. So uh, basically in the uh, case without corruption, the scenario without corruption, we don't have the, um, the, the devices go at converge, the device converge to good classifiers around the epoch uh, 4400. And then we have the corrupted scenarios. And basically, we have no clear difference uh, other than the, that the, the hub, the central node, well, it, uh, it, 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 um, 
it classifies a lot of samples from class 9, uh, from class 4 as class 9, but this is obvious because of the corruption. But uh, the address of the network just uh, is, uh, is just fine. Uh, for our future work, we, we will try to like, manipulate the, the data distribution um, with permanent properties, like the distance from the corrupted node. So we may have like, uh, the corrupted nodes surrounded by nodes with, uh, with most of the knowledge in the, in the network, like the, the, by the data set size, or with the least knowledge in the network. And we may have other, other scenarios where we have uh, many corrupted nodes. Moreover, we have tried only with the uh, with, uh, with the MNIST data set and, uh, and very simple models and uh, public or private models are available and uh, so we're going to try also that. Thank you and, uh, and goodbye.